For me, it is quite an incredible experience. Even days where we don't have sighters. Out the office, watching the sea in the horizon, feeling free. It's the unexpected stuff, even if it's really small, like if you're just going out and you see a dolphin and then all of a sudden like a turtle floats on by. It's just such a cool thing to see. I just kind of fell in love with working with marine mammals and I just knew that I didn't want to work in an office because I don't really like wearing a suit and tie and I just wanted to be out in the sea. When we do have a sighting, obviously it just makes it so much better and it's just quite a freeing kind of feeling. So we just had a sighting at the end, they kept changing direction, which is quite negative. So we decided to end sighting at that. It wasn't that close to the boat, but it was a pretty good sighting overall. Archipelagus has two main research bases. One of them is located on the island of Lipsy. This also houses our marine mammal team, and it's a great place for us to do our marine mammal research because it expands our study area and gets us to places that we wouldn't normally be able to go. Lipsy is a member of the Greek Dodecanese island region. Like many of the islands of Greece, Lipsy is part of the Aegean Sea. It sits on the southeastern corner of the country near the Turkish border. The island is around 17 and a half kilometers in size and has 35 kilometers of coastline, over 80 Greek Orthodox churches, and a population of roughly 700 permanent residents. Archipelagus has been monitoring the cetacean populations in the Aegean Sea for the last two decades. Our mission is to monitor the animals here in the Aegean Sea and use that data that we've collected to encourage conservation efforts, either through the local communities or through the government and through legislation. I quite like being able just to walk by and like the friendliness of all the locals. Everyone knows everyone and it's such a nice experience to be a part of. There's so much nature around and everyone's super friendly, which I think is a really important part of liking where you live. Yeah, loads of animals around, which is obviously great. It's really important to come and experience and see firsthand how different people's lifestyles are and how other people live. A definite culture shock, <laughs> but in a good way. Living on Lipsy has probably been one of the highlights. This is a beautiful island, so I feel very lucky. It's definitely like properly Greek culture. I think that's probably why I chose somewhere like this. I still remember my first night here in Lipsy. And I remember taking off the ferry and saying like, is someone's gonna pick us up? And they like start laughing like, you know, it's, it's just right here. <laughs> Everything is walkable. <laughs> I really like the idea of being in small community. Being on Lipsy and doing that kind of project is actually much easier than I imagined being on a bigger island. Yeah, I love it. You're doing great, I'm so proud of you. Even though it's such a small island, there's still places that you haven't seen before and I'm still really amazed, like mind blown by how amazing and how beautiful it is here. My favourite beach is Monodendri actually. Monodendri means one tree. 
just one tree against the landscape. It's a really beautiful place. So there are 25 interns now. We have the bioacoustics projects and we have also the behaviors projects. So we have two guys that are doing behavior projects. One is uh, comparing the reactions of dolphins in presence, absence of the boat. We look at the behavior of the dolphins we see during sightings on boat surveys. So whenever we have a dolphin sighting, we do notation and we film them for analysis later. So I'm gathering data collected mainly on the reactions that they display, whether that's going to be a neutral overall, negative or positive. If it's negative, then they'd be like, if they dive deep for quite a long time, kind of a warning just to be like, you guys need to leave the area. Another is to see if there is an association between the seabirds' presence with the dolphins. If they fly from there to the front of the boat, you put two because they're heading north. So flying is normal, resting, if you just see them missing in the water. As we're searching, they could be like flying around in circles or looking down. And then so at the time as well that you saw it, what species it is, if you need any help with the species, just ask. Microplastics in the vertebrate guts, great project to investigate the presence of microplastics in sea urchins, taken from different parts of the island and investigating how much they're affected by microplastics. Pretty much every single individual had some presence of microplastics. Sea urchins are part of our food chain. If we're eating uh, sea urchins or any other sea invertebrate, then we're consuming that as well. So we conduct beach cleans that we call macroplastic surveys and macroplastics are basically referring to any piece of plastic bigger than two and a half centimetres and we just go out and collect all the rubbish that we find on the beach including all of the macroplastic. It can be challenging if it's been bad weather the week before even just the day before it can be awful. We've had carloads and carloads of trash before and um, just on one beach. Some macroplastic surveys are a lot more productive than others. Some beaches, for example, from Messini, it really is just awful every single week and we will get there eventually with it. But it's going to take a lot more time with that beach in particular. And then we bring it back and categorise it so we can monitor what kind of plastics and what proportion of the rubbish that's being washed up on these beaches is plastic. So we are here in Brulia Bay at the Aegean Marine Life Sanctuary on the island of Lipsy. This site is where we hope to bring rescued dolphins from captive places all around the Europe. Also we hope to bring stranded marine animals here, so turtles, dolphins and seals that are in need of medical care and medical treatment. We can provide rehabilitation for them here before we release them back out into the wild. Every survey is really different. They usually take about one to two hours, depending on how much seagrass is in a particular quadrat or area. A small team of us head out. Several different people have different tasks, so I'll be looking at maybe species composition. Other people will be looking at species coverage or epiphyte coverage. And epiphytes are basically plants that grow on plants. A lot of the local people don't really know the importance of Posidonia, so it'd be really interesting to just inform people of the importance of these meadows. No one really talks about seagrass, but it's actually a really important species. My project right now is to investigate invasive fish species in Aegean Sea. I'm investigating three different habitats, Pasadonia Oceanica seagrass, rock bed and sand bottom, dropping it underwater camera, leaving there for half an hour and investigating how diverse uh, its invasive species are here. Invasive species in the Aegean Sea include Burstatella leaky, the shaggy sea hare, Pteros miles, the common lionfish, Siganus rivulatus, the marble spinefoot, Siganus luridus, the dusky spinefoot, and Parupenius froscali, the red sea goldfish. We've been looking at invasive species as well in the past. They come and they outcompete with Posidonia. So they compete with resources, light and nutrients as well. 
So when they're found in these waters, then it's an indicator that maybe the Posidonia is not doing so well, it's not so healthy, because the other species have been able to invade. We are hoping to see a lot of invasive species for raising awareness, but at the same time, we don't want to see a lot of invasive species because that would be alarming for native fish species. And then there is the field work for marine mammals. This is the most funny part, probably. So safety first. The life jackets are in the bench. In the front, the floor is a bit slippery, so pay, pay attention. There are three observers in the front. One is seabird, two are marine mammals. You will have one radio in the front for the two observers of marine mammals and one radio in the back. Who is in the back? Okay. If you think you see something, use the binoculars. Stay focused and enjoy, okay? We try to depart very early in the morning with the boat that is Penelope, a sailing boat. Usually we are seven or six interns, plus me and plus the captain, of course. We have four observers that are watching the sea all time. And then we have the person at the laptop that doing data entry. First survey got the good weather for it. Bottlenose dolphins are relatively common in the Aegean region. Um, other species like the common dolphin, despite their name, they're not as common anymore because they've been on the decline for about the past 50, 60 years and haven't actually seen a cetacean or a marine mammal for that matter yet. I'm um, sure we'll just wait and see and see if we see anything. During a sighting, we try to get as much information as we can. We are continuously recording the bioacoustic and the vocalizations, and we are taking as much photos as possible in order to match later and identify individuals. Behind, they are jumping. At the end of the sighting, they were all traveling very fast. And there was a lot of them jumping out of the water, diving out of the water. It was really an incredible thing. Being on survey is, is what I'm here for, really. So it's definitely a massive highlight for me. I think I must have been on 90 hours of survey in the months I've been here. And it's still exciting every time we see them. In the Mediterranean, we have our odontocytes, so our toothed whales, and one mysticite that is the, the fin whale. We have the finus delphis, that is the shot beak common dolphin. Then we have the botanus dolphin, the tulsiop truncatus. We have the striped dolphin, that is the stenella cerulea alba. The rhesus dolphin, Grampus griseus. And then we have the biggest one, that is the sperm whale, Cisete macrocephalus. Then we have the Cubis bicut whale, that is the Ziphius cavirostris. The misty seed is the Balenoptera physalus, the fin whale.
sound is the primary sensory modality of dolphins and there's so much boat traffic going on that noise is going to have an effect on the way they communicate. It can affect the way they make sounds and it can also reduce their ability to receive sounds. The echolocation is how they localise prey, it's how they detect where land is. So when we're producing signals, the frequencies that are either getting in the way of these signals or the animals are hearing those signals and falsely thinking that it's their own echolocation coming back to them. If this affects their communication, this can affect their whole life because that is the main way that they survive. I'm going to be analysing the different whistle shapes of the common short-beaked dolphin and I'm going to be comparing that to when there's boats present and when there aren't boats present to see if there's an effect that boats have on their communication. When we leave the harbour on a boat survey, when we get about 50 metres out, we can put the hydrophone out. The hydrophone is a type of microphone they use under the water that measures pressure differences. We'll reel that out about 150 metres and when that's done, we can connect it to the laptop. And on the laptop, we have PAMGUARD. PAM stands for Passive Acoustic Monitoring. So we'll use that to monitor the sounds and we can also use it to enter the data for everything else. So when we see dolphins, I will record and select every single whistle and measure their parameters. When we're ready, we'll turn PAMGUARD on and then we can listen to the sounds live and watch them as well. Once we're off the boat, we download the recordings into a software called Raven Pro, where it creates a spectrogram, which is basically just a visualization of the sounds that you can hear. Marine traffic is probably the most common source of noise pollution. The situation in Greece, I think, is a bit uh, less under control because, of course, there are a lot of private vessels, fishermen. If the noise vessel overlap on the whistles, of course, the, the dolphins has to speak louder uh, to communicate between each other. There is probably going to be a slight effect from our own vessel on the research that we take part in, but we limit that by only ever going at six knots. And when we have a sighting, we'll go less than so the engine isn't producing all the noise that a high speed vessel or a ferry would use. Larger vessels may have more of an effect, but obviously a smaller boat might have a bigger engine than, say, a larger vessel. So really, it's about the engine noise. We can turn the engine off if the dolphins are staying within our sight so that our engine doesn't have as much of an effect. We're not so much studying the bioacoustics just so we can see our direct effects on them, even though that is a big issue and it's something we want to combat. But the more we know about the communications that these animals are using, then the more we can use bioacoustics to monitor these populations and see how they're being affected. I've always been told that with field work, everything can change and you have to be adaptable. Until I actually got here and experienced it for myself, you don't quite appreciate how difficult it can be. When things go wrong in the lab, you can solve them there and then. Probably have to improve my patience. <laughs> I've enjoyed the experience. In this environment, you need to be very strong. When I started with the research on marine mammals, I had lots of people that were not believing in me. I, I felt so, so many times that I was not good enough. This opportunity has really allowed me to grow, both professionally and emotionally, I would say. In my experience, it's really important to have good teams that you can count on. It really opens up the possibilities for us with what we can do. It's been really cool being able to just like find out what other people's passions are and what they're interested in and just meeting people from around the world. People here that you meet are just, like, they're just unforgettable. And it does make up quite a lot of archipelagos. Get invested, just, just be present here. In the end of the day, as a conservationist, you're not doing that for yourself, you're doing that for them. I'm not going to live here, you're not going to live here, but they are going to live here and their kids going to live here. And that's not for me, that's for them. When I'm doing research on marine mammals, I just like it. I don't know how to explain. I think it's also good to pass it to the new researchers because if they know the logic behind that, for sure you're gonna love it, you know? <laughs>